Welcome to Truckee Talks. I'm your host, Maya Schneider, and it's hard to believe, but that's over the 100th time I've said that. We're celebrating a very special event with this show. We're celebrating our 100th Truckee Talk show. Over the last five years, we've brought you a whole bunch of your friends and neighbors, bringing you serious issues, fun issues, issues from all around the Truckee and Tahoe area. And it's my great pleasure today to introduce to you some of the people that made these shows possible. On this first segment, I'm introducing to you John Eccles. John is really the, the, the harbinger, the, the, the guy that created <laughs> Channel 6. And it's, it's nice to have you here, John. And we're going to be talking with you a little bit more. Mary Lou Sullivan, who came on board with our very second show. Mary Lou, great to have you here. Great to be here. She stuck out five years with us. <laughs> That's sort of miraculous. <laughs> and Dan Harvey, a very special guest. Dan, welcome back. Dan produced our very first show. And I, I, bear with us, folks, because it's really hard to get producers on this side of the camera. So I'll try not to make it too difficult for any of you. But welcome mm. to the show. Thanks. 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 Great to Very have you here. Nice, I want to talk a little bit about um, the history of Truckee Talks and how it came to be. And, and Dan, you probably have a little bit better recollection of that than even I do. Well, I think so. Uh, the way that I recall it is uh, uh, George uh, Tickner from Rotary, the Rotary Club, um, one day had the idea that there should be a show like this. And uh, George asked me to be the MC, and I thought about that for maybe one nanosecond. <laughs> and I said, I said, well, George, it's a good idea, but you know, we need somebody who's very bright and very articulate, loves to talk. <laughs> and they couldn't find anybody like that, so they drafted me yeah, instead. You <laughs> so, um, so George had me call John, and uh, Mary Lou had uh, spoken with John. So the three of us, or the four of us, actually, uh, got the ball rolling, as I recall it. Uh, Mary Lou, we found you through the newspaper. Is that how you came? To I have. On Thursdays, my favorite thing is picking up that Sierra Sun, and I was looking through it as I am wont to do, and I saw John's ad looking for volunteer producers, and I picked up the phone and called him right away. Because you have a background in yes, the production. Yes, I worked in Los Angeles I wrote for talk shows. I worked at Universal Studios as a post-production supervisor, so when I saw a chance to get back into television in some capacity, I was there. So. Well, I've been very fortunate over the last five years because one of the things that Trekkie Talks has given me is new friendships. The three of you, I certainly count in that group, and Mary Lou and I are, are close yeah. friends now. And Mary Lou brought a level of professionalism to the formats that well, I, we may not have achieved without her, <laughs> so I'm, I'm glad to have you here. John, what, of course, you've been doing production much longer than Trekkie Talks has been around. But think back to the first episode of Trekkie Talks, if you can. And I remember a round table <laughs> and one microphone right in the middle. <laughs> what, what, what are some of your favorite recollections about Trekkie Talks? It, it, we, were just, we were just recalling a few of those before we went on the air here. And then just talking about Mary Lou coming into it, I remember when she first walked into the room and she had a clipboard, she had a stopwatch. <laughs> <laughs> she had all the sense that we're ready. And I think she, she may have looked around a little and go, where, so uh, the where, is, yeah, right, where is the studio, where is this? And we were out in the classroom. Mm -hmm. In the trailer. In, in the, the, the portable. In portable, yeah. right. And um, we had been doing things because of the class, the video production class, and this was just always a route. How, what can we do that, that can go on Channel 6, the kind of fledgling programming at that point? So our programming had been the pet show and various student efforts and, and little things not as highly organized as, yeah. as this effort. Um, and this really galvanized us on mm -hmm. to, okay, we're going to try this, and, and we all have some funny stories about it all, that's, that's for sure. Um, it's some of the, the early memories, the, the letters we had put up, and <laughs> one of the letters falling down, you know, in the middle of the show, or little we things like that, and lights. Talks, trucky drops. Trucky drops, exactly. Certain things, exactly. Fall, certain right things that happen, and, and we were cramped into a half of a room trying to shoot the things. I'm going to leave one of the stories to Gary to tell <laughs> uh, about uh, some of our equipment. We were all breaking in equipment. We were trying, we were breaking equipment. We were. <laughs> <laughs> um, trying to make things look right with a very limited budget, and but with high spirits and enthusiasm from everybody who put up with a lot just to, to get things rolling. I think that's a good that's point. You know, this show really happens because of volunteers, and people don't realize that when they ask me about the show, it's all volunteers. Mm -hmm. We have now just a couple of staffers at the studios, but the show is put on because of the hard work and perseverance and energy and and really great enthusiasm of a of a fleet of, of people who mm -hmm. have come and gone over yes. the last five years. 
Dan, can you think back to that first show and, and have any recollection at all? Of well, you know, actually, Mary Lou and I were trying to figure yeah. out which one was the very first show. I think it was it down to sexually transmitted diseases. Yes, I think so. <laughs> nice and light topic to bounce yes, off of. Yes, we thought we would, you know, hit the ground running. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but actually, I think it came off very well. We got a local pediatrician, as I recall. I can't really remember her name. But, you know, I, I happen to um, have all of the formats from all of the shows we've ever done. I, John, John's saying a library that's here. That's sort of frightening. You know, it is very frightening. Really. And you look back at some of these things, and I'd certainly forgotten. I, looking at one show here, my guests were Jaina, Jane, and Jeannie. And I really wanted to shoot the producer that did that to me. Yeah. <laughs> but I remember some of the difficulties uh, before anybody had ever heard of this. Uh, when I would uh, try to line up people, the usual comment was something like, what? or where, <laughs> or uh, for those less degenerous, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> right. So, those, you know, I mean, it was, a, it was a wonderful experience. There was a little arm really twisting to get guests in the, at the get-go. They, yeah. they didn't realize you know, what we had going here with Truckee Talks until a little bit into it. Well, Mary Lou, my guess is, without looking, that you've produced more shows for Truckee Talks than any other single producer. I've probably done about 20 of the shows. Out, out of 100, I, that's... I tended to pick more serious topics. I've always thought that there was power in the media to make a better community. So it uh, sounds a little bit grandiose, but we've done shows on uh, local crime, uh, crime prevention with students, uh, the, like the Scared Straight type programs. We've done shows that have featured Hispanic community leaders, which have been personal favorites of mine. So those kind of shows are the ones I, I tended to gravitate towards. Well, let's look at some of those. I, I know the... Uh the studio has put together some clips and I'm a little <laughs> hesitant because I haven't seen them so I'm not sure what we're going to be talking over here but I know Gary's got a couple of uh, clips to run and we can sort of take a look and laugh along with the audience. I wonder if they have the fitness show. I certainly hope not. <laughs> that's that's not I don't know. Oh goodness gracious. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's called, oh no. <laughs> oh this is as the hair grows. Well that was the eyeglass phase that lasted that about 15 minutes. <laughs> we, we seem to have oh, picked so every fun. scared straight <laughs> <laughs> what we could possibly do here. Uh, those are my favorite shows. Oh, my Out of doors. That's the way oh, to do Christmas it. Christmas show. Yeah, we did too many of them. <laughs> One of oh, and we did get Ted in a hat. <laughs> what are we talking about? That? <laughs> you know, these are just not <laughs> flattering <laughs> shots, guys. <laughs> you know, Katie Couric goes through a lot of hairstyles, too. <laughs> That's true, but Katie never had to wear a rotary duck hat like that. Yeah, maybe I should bring the glasses back. What do you think, Mary Lou? Oh, I think you look great. <laughs> no problem. This is this is really terrible. This is this is not about trucking. It's talks. all you, this Maya. Is, yeah. Well, <laughs> I hope this clip ends pretty oh, quick. Yeah. I think that I was that. actually hey, the hey. Uh, PC2 look show. I, I can I can almost remember some of those. Oh my God, who is that woman? So where's oh, the clip from the show? That's the one I want to see. That master seems to have this clip, yeah. legs and disappeared. Mm -hmm. All these afraid. looks in only five years. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that oh, was a fun yeah. show. We went out to Lake Tahoe for that one. Now, where's the Measure M show? That was one of my favorite ones. Oh, Norm on the Bikes, Mary Lou. Oh, that oh, was a great show. Old Highway 40, that was a good one. <laughs> was, all right, well, I'm glad that <laughs> clip <Yeah>. was over. <laughs> that was excellent. Good work, Gary. Yeah. Yeah. But I think, you know, part of what that speaks to is the evolution of the studio. I mean, never mind my hairstyles. Dan, when you <laughs> produced the first show, we were back in one of the modulars. Yes, that's exactly single correct. Single mic on one table. And now look around you. Of course, the, the audience can't see this, but it must be quite a I'm change. really impressed. It, I mean, we were, we were very crude, very primitive, a lot of hand signals, a lot of retakes and retakes. I remember one show we did, and one of the few times <sighs> you got a little frustrated and... It must have been maybe, I don't know, maybe eight or ten retakes. It was it some was sort Laura of technical Mello problem. Thanking, it was yes, me was thanking it. Laura yeah. Mello for being on the show, and we had to have done yeah. that 20 times if we did it once. But I'm really impressed with all the changes. It's wonderful. I think one thing that, that's always impressed me is the level of professionalism of the volunteers and of the students, mm -hmm. because really the first four years or so that we did this show, the students did mm -hmm. a lot of the directing, a lot of the camera work, and now we're doing this in the evenings where we have the, the adult volunteers, but really whether we're working with the high schoolers or the adult volunteers, we have a level of professionalism here that you really might not find in other community studios. Mm -hmm. And you actually, you have two student cameramen tonight, and they're so professional you didn't even that know. You don't even know it, that's right. <laughs> I certainly didn't know it. I think we have one more clip that we're going to bring up in this segment before we bring on some of our other guest producers. Let's see if we can get that up. And God, I hope it isn't anything more of my hairstyles or it's just going to be too embarrassing. Okay, so here we have guests. just guests from, from previous shows. And what, 
what a diverse group of people that we've been able to interview over the years. Um, the town shows, of course, uh, contractors associations, what you're seeing here, more on the contractors association. A lot of people that you know in town. You, you've seen your friends, your neighbors. Uh, and what do you hear from people once they've been on the show as a producer? <laughs> Actually, Don't an amazing stop. number of people see the show and talk about it in the, in the weeks afterwards. Uh, it, it's really nice to put faces in our community out there so everyone can see. Uh, a, a lot of the guests are surprised when they get the feedback constantly, yeah. too. They'll say, I, can, I went to work and everybody was saying they saw <laughs> me. And, and, and there's a, a good sense of surprise about how many people are out there watching this. You know, one of the shifts that I think I've seen over the last five years is that the first few years people would say, well, I was channel surfing and I caught somebody <laughs> I knew on the TV. And now people will actually cop to watching Channel 6. <laughs> and, and I think that that must say something about That's a major the, the level of improvement. Yeah. It is. Well, we have uh, two other segments to get through tonight and many other producers. It is, it is so special to me and to have the three of you here. I just, yeah, I almost want to cry. It's just great to have It's you been a pleasure. Every, it's great every to be back with the old gang. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, guys. You've seen us through these five years here, and I, I know you're going to be here for, our, for more to come, <laughs> uh, you know, and well, helping us in those ways, too. You, you know, it took us uh, five years to get to 100 shows, but now that we're doing a yeah. show a week, we're going to get to 200 in a hot hurry. So, uh, we'll be so back. stay tuned for more. We'll be back. We're doing some reminiscing here on our 100th show for Trekkie Talk. Stay tuned. Thank you again, Dan Harvey, Mary Lou Sullivan, and John Eccles. We'll be back Thank in you. just a moment. Welcome back to the show. We're celebrating our 100th episode of Truckee Talks. And on this segment, we've got three more producers to introduce you to. Gary McNally, otherwise known as Shooter. Hi, Maya. Welcome to the show, Thank Shooter. You. Wendy Martin. Wendy, nice to have you here. And Paul Rose. Thanks, Paul, Maya. Welcome. Paul and Wendy, you also uh, produce other shows besides Truckee Talks, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Shooter, tell us a little bit briefly about your history with uh, Truckee Talks. Well, I started out uh, with Truckee Talks in the second show. We had the Forest Service on. We had some real rude and crude equipment. Uh, it was really hot in there. We had to ice the mics down, and then we'd go with the show. About 10 minutes later, they'd get hot and they'd shut down. And the Forest Service was there for about three hours. So they're in their full dress uniforms. Full uniform. Yeah. The sweat was going everywhere. It was pretty bad. I, I told them, please don't tell anybody about this experience because nobody will ever come on the show again. <laughs> Unfortunately, they didn't. Maybe that's what Mary Lou was talking about when she said it was hard to get people in the early days. Yes. Those rumors were abound. But now you are the coordinator here for Truckee Tahoe Community Television. So you've got a real paying job here at Channel 6. Yes, I work uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday nights pretty much. And... Uh, if anybody wants to learn the art of video production, uh, it's free. Come on down and give me a call. Five. And Wendy and Paul, that's how you got involved, was coming down at night and taking classes here with exactly. Gary. Exactly. And mm -hmm. Wendy, you've produced two shows. I've produced for Tucky Talks as well as Backcountry Television, and I've done a couple of my own spots as well. So. Great. Yeah. Great. And Paul? I believe I did the foreign exchange student to the AFS show. That was just a few months ago. That's right. I enjoyed that. And then, of course, you do the football games with Jack in the fall. Jack That's Davis, we do the announcing for that. Looking forward to that again next season. And you yeah. guys did a great job with that. Well, Trekkie went pretty far last year, too. We've got some clips to show in this segment, too. We're going to run through and see some of the uh, old familiar faces, if you will. Take a stroll down memory lane and see some of the other folks that have been here on Channel 6 or actually specifically on Trekkie Talks. Let's see if we can get that uh, clip up here and run it and <laughs> see if we recognize anybody that we can maybe blackmail tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> of course, this was a real foggy <clears throat> night. There we go. Oh, our old friend Sherry Mays from the Sierra Sun and, of course, Marshall from, then from uh, Boreal and also our Le Trekkie River Legacy. That's the great thing about this show is that you see so many people that you know. As producers, what's that like working with folks in the community? When you go out and ask them to be on Channel 6 or to be on Trekkie Talks, what do they usually say? Well, from my experience, they're, they're pretty eager because they've seen other people on TV and most people would like to have the experience of doing that. So it wasn't, that doesn't take much convincing. <laughs> of course, they, they can come on screen with all kinds of paraphernalia. We just saw there Peter Katita and a saddle he'd actually made by hand. And people do come and have a lot of different <laughs> ideas and, and notions that they want to share with us. And of course, there's the uh, shows where we talk about fire safety or community events. Gary, what's uh, one of your favorite memories producing for Channel 6 or for Truckee Talks? Uh, my favorite was uh, 
uh, covering the presidential summit uh, in the presidential helicopter with you, uh, and you were hanging out at the back of the uh, the uh, copter uh, the on a harness there. Yeah, Chinook. What yeah. a day that was, oh, huh? Oh, was great, yeah. You know, every once in a while we get to do something pretty exotic on uh, Trekkie Talks, and that was definitely one of them. We got to go out to Lake Tahoe, and we were out there with Senator uh, Harry Reid from Nevada. That's correct. And uh, got to follow a whole entourage. That was where you got your name, Shooter. That's correct. We uh, <laughs> went out to get on this helicopter, and Gary had a helmet-mounted camera. And it wasn't a very high-tech sort of thing. It looked kind of like a, it was a, a baseball, baseball helmet. helmet. <laughs> yes, and he had a camera helmet. glued to the top of it. And we got on the uh, helicopter, we got on the Chinook, and of course we have people there from Fox and from the networks, and they've got their high-tech, uh, and I get on there, and Gary follows me and sits down, and one of the other uh, uh, hosts from another uh, station looked over at me and said, is that your shooter? And I'd never heard the term before, <laughs> but I, yeah. I sort of figured it out. They were talking about my cameraman, and I said, well, of course. That's my shooter. And I, and I scooped her shooter, by the way. You know, right. I got the best seat. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> right by the tail of the Chinook. Uh, and, of course, they dropped the tail, and John Eccles and you and I each had a chance to ride the tail of that Chinook as we were cruising over Lake Tahoe. That was a pretty mm. amazing event. must say, I've seen the footage, and it's wonderful. So yeah, we're back. That's, that, was, that was a fun, fun day and a fun experience. Mm. Thank you all. It's, it takes a lot of energy to put your time into not only Trekkie Talks, but all of the TTC TV shows, and, and we certainly appreciate it. I know the community appreciates it. Shooter, Thank everything you. you're doing, congratulations <laughs> on the classes that you offer. You're really bringing the studio up to a new level, and it's been great. Thank Happy you. Around. Appreciate it. All right. We'll be back in just one more minute. We have a few more producers we want to introduce you to and show you some more of our history here on Trekkie Talk. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Trekkie Talks. This is the final segment of a very special show. We're taking a walk down memory lane with some of our producers. It's our 100th anniversary and we wanted to share that with you. One thing that I've learned in this show is that the hardest group of people it is to get up on stage and then get calmed down are producers. So it's been an interesting show to put together. It's my great pleasure to introduce all of you to Jack Davis. Jack, nice to have you on this side of the camera. Well, Miss Maya, it's nice to be here. And of course, Nina Marskow Markowski, excuse me, <laughs> Nina. Hi. More commonly known as Nina Ski. Thank and you. Local artist and, and local producer as well. Nice to have you yeah, here. A lot of hats. Brian Regalo, nice to have you here. Again, another touch of professionalism to the studio. It's great to have you and all of the energy that you and Jack and Nina bring to the studio. It's a great thing. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Well, we've got, uh, we've got some history. Jack, one of my favorite Jack stories. You produced a show, put it all together, had the guests there, the studio was set up, and then what happened? Then they told me we have to cancel the show because Maya's sick. <laughs> and so I had to go on as the host with my nose running <laughs> and when the camera was off me, I reached for my handkerchief, and the darn uh, connector for the, the mics fell on the floor. <laughs> but everything went well after that. How was your day as a host? <laughs> uh, well, it was, it was good because those women kept the show rolling nicely, as women seem to have. You know, they take control and Those were go. your guests, of course. Yeah, of co yes, thank you. Well, Jackie did a great job, and all of the reviews that we had were, were wonderful. So it's nice to know that our producers can not only produce a show, but sub in as the guest host when needs be. Hmm, hmm yes. Nina, Brian, the two of you were recently involved in producing a, a pretty <laughs> controversial show. You want to tell us about that? Of course, people may not recognize the two of you here, but this is exactly where you were sitting. Yeah, I was saying, you know, we are sitting in the same position. <laughs> no, you talk about it, Brian. No, you talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll confess. Uh, it was the April Fool's show, and we really had a great time doing it. And uh, Brian uh, was a real playful player in this show that we put together. And we had a lot of fun. It was it was great. I hope that everybody understood that it was um, a joke. <laughs> no, I, yeah. <laughs> this isn't normal. <laughs> well, what was great about that is it was really the first Trekkie Talks that was somewhat extemporaneous. I mean, it was really off the cuff, and and we all tried to follow each other around on the on the cues there. But really, it, it was it was a lot of fun to do. Well, I think the funnest part to me was that it was uh, total improvish. Um, you didn't know who the guests were. The studio <laughs> didn't know who the guests were, and. Uh, Again, uh, Brian was cooperative in, in being uh, a fellow Miss guest. Miss Kitty. 
Yeah. <laughs> Did you get any dates out of that line? Mm, not the ones I would have liked. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Brian, if you would tell us a story about what it's like here working for Truckee Talks. What is it like being a volunteer here? Well, I, I just really enjoyed it, um, coming down here and uh, uh, just working with these folks. I've only been here for about eight or nine months, and uh, it was a real opportunity for me to come down and just meet people when I moved here. And uh, I can call all these people friends that are here, yeah. so that's been the best thing for me. It's a great tight group here. Nina, yeah. how about you? I love it. I like uh, all the diversity that's uh, offered, uh, the support of everybody. Um, you can definitely count on everybody as, as your friends, uh, people to critique you and uh, let you know what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. And uh, generally speaking, everybody does give you such support that you always do feel like you're doing a good job. Well, there's always our uh, friends and neighbors out in the community, too, that, that pull us aside and say, gee, no, if you could just change this around, you'd, you'd have a good show there. Jack, you wear a lot of hats here. You're, you produce for Truckee Talks, but you're also camera, you direct. Tell us a little bit about your experience here. Well, it's been quite an experience. The reason <laughs> I wear the hats is to keep the shine off my head. Right. But, uh, <laughs> we wouldn't let you wear one hip on stage. Anyway, it's, it's been a lot of fun. I've been here just over a year now, and it's been a great learning experience. And going beyond with Brian and Paul <laughs> Rose, we formed our own video production company. Mm -hmm. and. It's because of learning here that we're able to do that. And it's, of course, we have a lot of fun. And one of the greatest pleasures I have is either as floor director or camera person trying to make you laugh, which is never a difficult thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's at the wrong moment, and that's the only problem. <laughs> if you don't know how difficult it is to sit up here and have people making funny faces at you on the other side of the camera and try to maintain that straight face. We've got another clip that we want to show you. It's our last clip, and again, we're just taking a stroll down memory lane, looking at some of our friends and neighbors and uh, community members that have joined us here on Truckee Talk. So let's take a look at that clip and see what we've got here. Of course, we've got the foggy screen. And uh, now, you know, this is interesting, having Monina start off there. Mary Lou has produced a number of shows really trying to uh, get a lot of the Hispanic community involved. And what's great about this is that it's evolving here at TTC TV. Uh, Sergio Coronado, uh, we're hoping to get him online with a Spanish-speaking show, and that would be a great thing here. Um, Oh, Brees, of course, the second mayor of Truckee. And just a lot of, we've really had the opportunity to interview a broad scope, a broad variety of people. I think I'd like to get that shot of Jim Porter. I'm sure I could use that. <laughs> I, I think there's money to be found in the background of that. I'll have to find this show and, and uh, get it. But it really has been fun having a lot of different people. Of course, what you've seen here tonight is a lot of different people in uniform who have been on the show. We like to have uh, different representatives from the town, whether it's the fire district, the rangers, uh, the sheriff's office, or our upcoming police department. Of course, we have uh, the utility districts and the public governments uh, also come on board and give us information. And then, as Nina can attest to, we have uh, folks from the artist community and a lot of different community-oriented folks come on board. As you uh, look at this, Nina, and see some of your friends and neighbors, what do you think about looking back at some of these old shows? Um, I think that um, the entire studio, um, all of the shows have uh, developed substantially, and I think that uh, in part is the equipment that we're working with. Um, the instruction is outstanding, and again, the support, like I said, uh, of uh, all the fellow workers here at the station make it easy. You know, it's a fun job. It is, you know, for, for, for a job that doesn't pay a whole lot of money, <laughs> or none at all. They can't fire us. <laughs> That's true, I never thought of it that way, you know, although I imagine any time I could show up and, and they would. It's funny, too, going back and looking at the old sets and, and some of the different backgrounds that we've used and try to, up oh my goodness, Steve Wright with more hair. And of course, <laughs> the different musical groups, that was, I think, the Sierra Mountaineer chorus there. Um, gosh. Jack Byer, now that goes back quite a way. He was uh, police chief here in town a number of years ago. Really fun to see all of these old uh, community faces and, and folks, not old faces necessarily, but uh, faces that we interviewed quite a long time ago. Really fun to go back through and watch some of that. Jack, what is, uh, I, I sort of pulled your worst nightmare out of the hat there in terms of memories. What's one of your fondest memories here working for uh, Truckee Talks, volunteering here? Well, working with everyone, and of course the night we did the April Fool's show, I was directing and I was having trouble seeing because I was laughing so hard. <laughs> but working with 
everyone here has been just a wonderful experience in, in meeting all the new people and of course working with you. Working with you, Jack. <laughs> we really do have a family here. And you know, there's a number of people that couldn't show up tonight for one reason or another. I want to go through a list of names of people, and I certainly hope I remember everybody. Uh, Carrie Farquhar is one of our volunteer producers. Bill Fresnel has produced a number of shows for us in the past, and in fact has hosted shows as well. Mark Schaller produced a number of Truckee Talk shows. He's also appeared on uh, uh, Channel 6. And Ted Owens, who is yeah. really great stand-in host. Uh, he's been a super co-host. He's produced shows and, and has a great interest in, in continuing, uh, perhaps with some kind of Sierra Heritage show. He's, he's really been super to have around and a great friend to have on the set. And he was even game enough to wear that Christmas hat when he told me, he swore to me that he wouldn't wear it. <laughs> <laughs> There's also a couple of other names I really need to mention. Jeff and Mary Lou Sullivan, you, you saw Mary Lou here earlier on the show. And Jeff and Mary Lou have been instrumental in getting our set updated, have put in more time, energy, uh, blood, sweat, and tears into this show than any other two people I can name, and I really want to thank them for everything that they've done over the last five years. Carol Susco uh, gave us a mm -hmm. great hand in, in putting this new set together, and of course, Jack and Brian, you were a great, huge help in, in getting this. So as our set evolves, again, this isn't something that just sort of appears. This is something that happens because our volunteers make it all happen. Uh, just a couple of closing comments. It's been really an amazing five years for me. Uh, this, the transition of the show from starting off in one uh, trailer office with a round table and a microphone stuck in the middle and a bunch of hot lights, uh, a ninth grader or a tenth grader carrying a scroll over as our human teleprompter. <laughs> the show has really come a long way in five years. And if it doesn't look that way on the other side of the screen, that's my fault. But uh, it's been a great pleasure doing all of these shows with all of these people. I've met a tremendous number of people that we've either interviewed or have volunteered here at Channel 6. And what a delight and what an honor and a privilege that's been. So we'll get to our second 100th show in a hot minute, uh, probably another year and a half. But I want to thank all of you for joining us for the last 100 shows. And stick with us. We're going to have plenty more to come. Thanks for joining us for this very special Trekkie Talks. And we'll see you next time.